Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the I Thrive Podcast. It's your boy, Sonny Nesperance. Today, I got with me Jamaica from, from in Florida, living in Florida, brother Xavier Miller. Last name Miller, yes, though, you sir. know, so that's probably the Florida is. <laughs> so Jamaica usually Fitzroy and Price and this, but right. it's Xavier Miller. Some call me Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> they said I'm, I'm i'm americanized american oh yes oh yes americanized for real man americanized not all the way because at least you're still in the hot sun in florida but then oh, you yeah. didn't move oh, to yeah. a cold spot in in america right, right, and so right, forth, right. i don't think that would never down i'm not gonna say never happened but you know i highly doubt it yeah highly <laughs> doubt of course you want to keep your nice sun your nice beautiful sun you know? yes sir yes sir i love it <laughs> no that's good that's good but no how's everything going this evening brother i know right now it's about uh, 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 9.54 uh, yeah, yeah. kind of late <laughs> kind of late, no, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad you know, whatever times I can get to get any brothers and sisters coming on I, I appreciate it, you know yes, so um, it's it's truly a blessing, I'm truly grateful, those of you watching once again remember these, you know, these podcasts these testimonies, they're here just to simply encourage and help you, you know um, it's nothing, me it's just a privilege I have that God allows me to get these testimonies. There's nothing good that I have done, or there's no good in me to even be able to say I deserve to be able to do something like this. I, it's, it's just a privilege that God allows me to have. You know, before we begin, as you all know, this podcast affiliates itself with one church and one church only, uh, which is First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ, who the leader, teacher, and guide is Apostle Pastor Gino Jennings. If you want to be baptized right in the name of Jesus Christ, you can go on uh, location, the truthofgod.com. Click locations and see the nearest uh, uh, area close to you, whether it be international or whether it be in America. See which uh, is the closest area. Usually there's a number there. You can contact through that number or just contact whatever information you have. And uh, the local minister or secretary will be able to get back to you and, um, uh, you know, set all that up. Also, if you want to uh, 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 see if there's a church location close to you as well. You can go on. Oh, you can go on the. Oh no! Also for baptism, there's a contact form where you could fill out a baptismal request. Pretty much, you put your name, your first name, your last name, and so forth, and you put the message here. I want to be baptized. I live in so and so country. So that's another way for the baptisms too. Uh, if you want to see if there's a church close to you, you can go on locations and and see the address either pop up. I recommend just calling first just to see because of all the restrictions. So you don't go somewhere for nothing. I know there's some brothers and sisters and some people, they'll travel like two, three hours to go to service, you know? So I wouldn't want you to have that drive. And the way these gas prices are, <laughs> it looks like they'll have the person sleep where they are for the three hours and away for service the next week. Because these gas prices, man. <laughs> hey! Shooting up, shooting up. Shooting up. We don't want you to do that for, for nothing. You know, so um, other than that, uh, before we begin as well, keep, don't forget to keep the apostle and his family in prayer, the faithful ministering brethren and their families as well. Those that are sick, those that are afflicted, those that are going through it, you know, those uh, um, who are suicidal, those who are, you know, just going through tough, tough times in their life. Let's not forget to keep one another in prayer, brothers and sisters. Also, keep me and my family in prayer as, you know, uh, our goal, you know, is just to continue to strive and hold on to God's unchanging hand. With that being said, that's going to be enough for me, brother Xavier Miller, Jamaica, who's Americanized. Ay, ay, ay. How did is it that, you know, you came and uh, God brought you out from wherever you were in, into the truth of God? Well, uh, where do I start? <laughs> I wonder if I can tell it all. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Americanized already. That's how they start talking. You know? <laughs> Jamaica straight to the point, you know, but Americans, they, they, they get complicated at the beginning. Oh, man, don't, don't, do, don't do me like that. Where, where, where do I begin, John? Where do I begin? Huh? <laughs> uh, let me start at the beginning. Mm. Anyway, I was, uh, I mean, growing up and stuff, I mean, I have a, grandma, a grandmother that's, you know, always spiritual, always praying mm. and stuff, you know, always want me to go to church and whatnot. So back in Jamaica, I used to go to those, uh, this Catholic church. Mm. Uh, I didn't really want to go, but I mean, I, I went, you know, whenever I had the chance to, or whenever my grandma forced me to go, whenever she came to Jamaica to visit. Mm. Um, never really learned anything. You know, every time I go, I just, you know, fall asleep yeah. throughout the whole message and everything. Mm. You know, so I, I didn't really learn anything. 
you know, I can't remember anything that was being taught there, wow. you know. Um, anyways, you know, I moved to, I came here in America when I was 16. And uh, when I came here, I stopped, I stopped going to church. Yeah. You know, I was, uh, you know, I felt like I was innocent when I was in Jamaica, mm -hmm. you know. But when I came to America, like, my life started changing, mm -hmm. you know. Like, I started doing things and, and, and believing things that I'm not supposed to believe and all that mm -hmm. stuff involving in things and, you know, engaging with people that I'm not supposed to engage with and stuff. You know, so my mindset started changing and I started living my life, you know, in a different kind of way. Mm -hmm. And I remember I got to a point where I, I wanted one thing from the Lord. You know, I, I have a great desire for a thing from the Lord. And every time I feel like, okay, well, I have it, it, it just slip away from me, mm -hmm. you know. So I got angry at the Lord. You know, I, I, I got angry. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go out there and live my life, mm -hmm. you know. So I went out there started living my life and doing, you know, crazy stuff and whatnot. And uh, I remember the Lord, you know, made me sick. Oh. Lord made me sick. And what I was sick with, I mean, no, nobody could, you know, uh, or possibly was, you know, sick with at that time before I, I found out I'm not really sick with that. But mm -hmm. at that time, I thought that, okay, I might have this, you know, and nobody can help me. Doctors can't help me. Nobody can help me, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I prayed, I remember when I was, you know, when I went to the doctor and whatnot and, and got my tests done and whatnot. And during that time period of like waiting for the results, I, I, I remember I started thinking a lot, you know, mm -hmm. I'm Lord, I had to run back to him because I had left him and, mm -hmm. and, and think that there is no God. At one point, I, I'm thinking that, oh, there was no, even no help. Wow. You know, I'm like, well, the Lord, you know, he just maybe tell us that just to scare us. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, he's not going to send us to send us to hell. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, there's no hell. I don't believe in that. You mm -hmm. know, so I didn't believe in the Lord. I was just doing my thing. So when I got sick and, you know, I got to my lowest point and I had to run back to him, mm -hmm. you know. But at that time, I didn't have no faith. Mm -hmm. So I said, I said to my, I, I remember praying and asking the Lord, I said, Lord, if you get me out of this situation, you know, if I go back to the doctor and all my results are fine, everything is all good. You know, I said, Lord, show me that you will. Mm. And how are you going to show me that you will? When I go back to the doctor and every result is fine and nothing is wrong with me, I'm all good to go. Then you show me that you will. Mm. And in return of doing that, I'll serve you. Mm. Right. So after I went back to the doctor and everything was fine. Everything was good with me and everything. So that I was I was happy leaving that office that morning. I remember it just like it was yesterday. And after that, I started, you know, I, I seek a church. And I started going to this non-denominational church mm. for a while. You know, I, I didn't involve myself too much though. You know, I mean the pastor would call me here and they would check up on me and you know they wanted me to help out here and help out there, but mm -hmm. I didn't involve myself into that kind of stuff. I just go to church and just sleep, yeah. you know. And it got to the point where, you know, I got involved with some something else again, mm. you know. But it, during the midst of that thing, my brother from Jamaica came to visit. And when he came to visit, he was telling me, he's like, I remember he said to me that night, that same night, he said, bro, I got, I got something to talk to you about. In my head, I'm thinking that whatever I was involved in my soul, that's what he wanted to talk to me about. But he actually wanted, me, he wanted to talk to me about the truth of God. You know, he actually, that's what he actually wanted to talk to me about. So I said, okay, well, you know, all right. You, know, you want to talk to me about such a thing? All right, we'll talk about it. You know, so that night, I remember when he was going to sleep, we were going to sleep. And he said, man, I want to pray first. So I said, all right. Now, this is, this is you know, my brother that I grew up, not biological brother, but mm -hmm. we're like so close. You know, we, we sleep together and, you know, and everything, eat mm -hmm. together, we grew up together, mm -hmm. basically. You know, and he wasn't a, a spiritual guy like I was. He didn't want to go to church back in Jamaica like I did. You know, every time I tried to come, tell him to come to church with me, he didn't really want to come and all that. So now you you have him that said he wants to pray before we go to sleep. I mean, we kind of fell off a little bit too since I came to America. So I don't really, I didn't really know him like that, like that, and what he was involving himself into. You know, so when he said you want to pray, I said, all right, go ahead and pray. While he was praying. I heard him, I heard the Holy Ghost, you know, wow. and I, I felt the bed jerking and everything. In my head, I'm like, whoa, 
the Holy Ghost? I'm like, man, you got the Holy Ghost? Mm. I don't even know that. You know, I'm like, I, right away, I got jealous, man. Mm. I got jealous. I said, man, I want that. Mm. I, I want that. You know, so the next morning when we woke up, he's like, man, I want you to listen to this. He put the pa- I put uh, the, the truth of God on on YouTube, and he put passages on, and he said, listen to this. While I was listening, I couldn't understand anything. Like, I'm hearing, but I couldn't. I can't understand anything. I, I'm, lo- I'm looking at it, listening. Like I'm trying to listen, but I can't understand. I said, man, pause the video, and you tell me what he's saying, because I can't understand. You know, it's, it's crazy how I couldn't understand what he was saying. But I'm looking at it, trying to listen, can't understand. So I said, pause the video. You tell me what he's saying. And every time he put passions back on, I tell him, look, pause it again, and you have to tell me what he's saying. Mm. And I remember when he, he did that, he paused, he told me what Pastor was saying, he's going to scripture, show me some things. I remember we started talking every single night. At that time, I'd get off work, I think at 12 o'clock, 12, 12 a.m. I get off work. Mm. And every night when I get off work, he would walk me through the scripture. He would show me things in the scripture. And we would talk from night until in the morning, nine o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock, nine o'clock in the morning, show me things in the scripture and whatnot. And I remember when I started getting in tune with God, like I started thinking about God a lot now, you know, now that he's telling me all these things and whatnot, and I, I'm believing it because he's showing me with the scripture, you know, everything he tells me, he goes to the scripture and he shows me, you know, so I'm like, man, I started getting impressed. I'm like, man, you know, you, you know the Bible like that too. I remember even telling him, man, why don't you just, why don't you be a preacher? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I tell him, man, why don't you be a preacher, man? You're so good with the scripture and everything. Mm-hmm. I was impressed at that time. Yeah. You know, so I remember when I started talking about the Lord a lot, I started thinking about the Lord a lot. And I remember when, you know, I made up in my mind that, you know, like I said, I made up in my mind, I want the Holy Ghost. You know, I made up in my mind that I'm going to seek the Holy Ghost. So one night I was at work and I was thinking and I'm like, I was so in tune, you know, and, and I was so impressed that I started thinking, now I can't wait to get home to go talk about the scripture, talk about the Lord and whatnot. You know, one night I saw, so I was thinking about the Lord a, a lot. And I remember making up in my mind, I said, because every time I try to get closer to the Lord back then, I could feel, I could feel the devil coming after me. Oh. You know, I could feel it. So it would get me kind of scared. So I would back off a little bit. So mm. because of that, when I said, I, I said, Lord, I'm ready to serve you. You know, I'm ready to suffer. I remember I said that in my mind and I started talking to the Lord in my mind. Mm. That night when I got home, I separated myself. I was in the dining room. You know, my brother and my uncle was in the living room. I don't remember what they were doing, but I sat in the dining room by myself and I was just thinking about the Lord. While I was thinking, I said, because usually when I get home, I don't go in the shower right away. You know, mm. it took a while for me to go in the shower. I'll go to bed late. I'll go, sometimes I'll go to bed like seven o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock mm. in the morning, nine o'clock in the morning. You know, so that night I told myself, all right, I'm going to go take a shower. Then I'm going to sleep. Usually I don't try to go to sleep so early. Then after that, before I go to sleep, I'm going to read the Bible. That's mm. something that I never usually like, like to do. To do. Before I, read, before I go to sleep, I'm going to pray. That's another thing that I used to put off a lot. You know, you come to my mind, I'll pray another time. Comes to my mind the next time, I, 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 and I keep forgetting. I'm not putting it off and not doing it. But that night, I tell myself, I'm going to take a shower. I'm going to go in bed. I'm going to read the Bible first. Then I'm going to pray. Then I'm going to sleep. So while I, you know, I got in bed and I opened the Bible and I started reading, but I couldn't understand anything. So I'm like, you know what? I started getting bored. Like I'm falling asleep. So I said, man, let me, let me put this Bible away, man. Let me let me go pray. The first thing I prayed for was understanding. Then after that, I started praying about some other things. And I was about to stop. But then something tells me, just, just go a little bit further. Mm-hmm. Go a little bit further. As I went a little bit further and uttered just a few more words, that's when the Holy Ghost came and just knocked me. When it knocked me, it's like that rushing mighty wing that the, that the, uh, the book of Acts talk about. Mm. Rushed through my body. And when it hit me, I shouted out, huh? So I paused. I'm like, man, because at that time, I didn't know what the Holy Ghost was. I didn't understand it. I didn't know what it was for. I didn't know how it's supposed to move on me. I, I didn't have no understanding at all. 
I didn't, I didn't even know it was the Holy Ghost. So when it hit, when it hit me, I'm like, whoa, what was that, man? What caused me to do that? I got scared a little bit. So I'm like, man, let me try to pray again. And the moment I try to utter another word out of my mouth, it hit me again. This time it hit me harder, louder. Ah! So I jumped up out of bed, man, and I uh, run through the, you know, run out the door in the hallway. My uncle and, and my, my brother met me there. They're like, man, what's going on with you, man? I'm like, man, I'm just, I'm just, I was just praying. I don't know what happened. So while I went in the living room, I sit down and I remember, you know, uh, when the scripture talks about uh, uh, out of thy belly shall flow living water, mm -hmm. I started feeling it in my, my stomach. Wow. My stomach started feeling like that. Like mm -hmm. things just turned up in my stomach. Like I want to throw up and all that. And I was moving. I'm like, I'm moving. I'm like, why am I moving? Why does my stomach feel like this? You know, I even went to the refrigerator. I'm like, man, maybe I just need some water. Mm. I went to the refrigerator, drank some water, tried to wash it down and whatnot. I mean, nothing, nothing changed though. I went to my bed feeling uncomfortable that night, you know, because I didn't know what was going on with me. So the next morning I woke up, I said, bro, do you know, I mean, do you think that's the Holy Ghost? He's like, I don't know. So I said, all right, let me try to pray again. And when I closed my eyes and tried to pray again, the Lord started speaking through me the whole time. And I remember when, you know, the first words that came out of my mouth, because at that time, my grandma used to tell me, don't call the Lord's name in vain. Mm -hmm. But the first two words that came out of my mouth when the Lord started dealing with me was Jesus Christ. And the Lord was dealing with me all day long. I went to work. They sent me home. They thought I was on drugs, you know, and all that. They sent me home. They said, kick him out of here, man. Send him home. Don't let him come back. They, mm -hmm. They're watching the doors and everything, making sure that I, don't, I don't come back. <laughs> you know, and that same day, I even had a friend that betrayed me, a good co-worker. We used to hang out together and all that. And he betrayed me that same day because he didn't understand what was going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, so after that, after we received the Holy Ghost, the next time I put on a service, a telecast, that's when the understanding started coming to me. That's when I could understand Pastor Jennings now. That's when I didn't need my brother to explain anything to me. The Holy Ghost brought the understanding of everything to me. And from that point, that, from that point on, everything that passes in preaching, sometimes it takes me a little while to get certain things and I have mm -hmm. to play it all over again. And mm -hmm. you know, it takes me a little while. But from that point, all the understanding just comes to me so easy. You know? So that's how I came into the truth of God. You know, I remember when my brother was, because I was scared of the Holy Ghost. Mm. And I remember when I was at work, I didn't want them to hear me speaking in tongues. So I used to like try to hold it back and all that. And you know, when I come home, that's when I, you know, that's when it just deals with me freely when mm. I come home. And I remember when there were certain times when I didn't want it to deal with me because at first I didn't know what it was. Mm. <laughs> I don't know what this is dealing with me, moving on me and speaking through me. Could, I'm like, I know it could be the Lord. It could also be the devil. Mm. I don't know which one. You know, so I was kind of scared and I, I loved it when my brother was around and whatnot so I could be free around him and stuff. So I remember when he was leaving to go back to Jamaica and I was thinking, man, what am I going to do now? You know, but the Lord, when he left, the Lord comforted me. Wow. And when he left, I started watching the, the telecast. Like I remember when I put on the telecast, I would sit right there and I would keep my foot and I wouldn't move one bit and I make sure I get every single word I would just stare at the phone the whole time like this. Now, even if I want to go to the bathroom, I'm not going. <laughs> I'm not moving until that telecast is done. Mm -hmm. Anybody is calling me, they have to wait. If somebody messages me, they have to wait until the message is done completely. And I get every single thing from it. If I miss a word and I didn't understand what he said, I'll, I'll, put it, I'll bring it back and make sure I get that understanding. And in the space of one to two months, the Lord filled me up with knowledge, understanding and wisdom fill me up so much that saints would talk to me and think that oh i'm in the truth for years mm -hmm. but i'm only in the truth for like one two months three months mm -hmm. but the lord filled me with so much knowledge that they thought that oh i was in the truth of god for so long mm -hmm. you know so i'm just uh that's my testimony of like you know coming in to the truth of god mm -hmm. you know i remember when at uh, one time i remember when because the lord also built my faith up you know, because when I just came in, when I was just coming in and whatnot, I didn't, you know, remember, I didn't believe in the Lord. I didn't trust in him like, like I should. 
So the Lord built my faith up. I remember one time I uh, I got a, I had a dream, you know, and somebody else had a dream, you know, like me and this person used to talk and whatnot. And I had a dream against the person. The person had a dream against me. So I woke up in the morning I'm like, man, what's, what's going on? You know, I mean, I don't even know what dream means. You know, I don't know if this is, if what's going on. I don't, I don't know what to believe. So I said, Lord, the next telecast I watch, let Pastor Jennings talk about dream. So I went to work that day and I came home in the night. And the, the very first telecast that I put on that I put on that night, Pastor Jennings was dealing with dreams. I'm at my Lord. The Lord answered my prayer right then. Right then, he answered my prayer. First message I put on, Pastor Jennings was talking about dreams. You know, that's another testimony. I can't remember them all. <laughs> no, so one question I would have though. So when you say, you know, you did not believe in God or the, the in the hell or whatnot. So you say at one point in your life you were an atheist. At one point in my life, I would I would say. But the thing is, though, I feel like I didn't believe, like, I feel like I, did, I was trying to force myself not to believe, you know what I mean? Because then certain things that I would do, it would still bother me, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Certain things that I know that I'm not supposed to be doing, it would still kind of bother me. So it's like I was trying to force myself not to believe, mm -hmm. you know? So that, I think, because, yeah, there's certain things that I would do and it's still bothers me. Because I'm like, I know the it, it, it may have been then you were agnostic. Right. Agnostic, because agnostic, what it is, is when someone, like, you believe that there's something. You just believe that there's something there. Yes. But you right. don't believe to the fullest until you kind of see something. Right, exactly. You'd say you were, like, in that type of category. Right, right. Agnostic, because exactly. it's like, so. because pretty much within your prayer, you said, well, Lord, you get me out of this, because that's how agnostics right. usually pray. You get me out of this, you get me out of that, you get me out of, you know, then right. I'm going to serve you. Because you need to see something, you know, to right. say, you know what, okay, now there is a God. Now there is, you know, belief and so forth. Right, exactly. A blessing exactly. to you as well. Was your brother coming down to, to visit you and, you know, giving you those steps, the one, two, three, and, and so forth of coming in and whatnot, which is, you know, wonderful blessing. Another, uh, which, you know, comes to another question where you know you, you know your brother comes he, you know explaining this to you helping you with this helping you with that and whatnot how because i know there's a temple in uh florida and so forth how did you well, how were you in the or uh, like in florida like there's a first church in florida how did well, how did you me. like how did you like did you just go and like how did you find the 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 church oh actually <laughs> So after um, after I received the Holy Ghost, I didn't mm. start going to church right away. Mm. Um, I I started listening to the message, build myself up. You know, I, was, I still wasn't baptized yet when I received the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. uh, so the whole time for I think I baptized, the, you know, I got I received the Holy Ghost, I believe December seventh um, of two thousand sixteen. Mm. Um, I think I didn't get baptized until two thousand seventeen February, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Uh, so I was listening to the message and then, you know, it just hit me one day when Pastor Jim said, you know, it doesn't matter where you are, you know, it doesn't matter where you are, we'll, we'll send some brothers to come baptize you, mm -hmm. you know, so I, when, that, when he said that, I'm like, man, so I went on the website, right away, I went on the website, um, I got Minister Abraham's uh, on Facebook, I believe, I think I'll try to find him on the website as well, but Facebook, I messaged him, telling him that I want to be baptized, you know, so he said, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll get you this weekend or sometime, you know. So after that, um, I, I got baptized, and um, Brother Emmanuel was with, was with him at that mm -hmm. time, and that they started telling me about, you know, uh, we, oh yeah, we we have a service in our um, in Fort Lauderdale, you know, and there's a lot of Jamaican brothers and sisters there and whatnot. So he started telling me those things, and um, I don't I don't quite remember. I remember the first time I went to church was in uh, Fort Lauderdale, uh, Florida. And that's uh, about three and a half hours or so from where I live. Mm. You know, I remember driving down there um, for the first time. Um, I don't remember if, because I think that, that same year, Pastors came to Orlando as well. I think that same year, April, uh, Pastors came to uh, Florida as well. So I don't remember if I went to that service first or I went to uh, Fort Lauderdale first. Mm. I can't quite remember. But that's how I, you know, I think I went to Fort Lauderdale. Then I got the information about um, service in Orlando 
and uh, service in Tallahassee, Florida. Um, but then I started, uh, you know, riding the church van. You know, started you know taking the church van with the brothers and sisters down, you know, to the services and stuff. Mm. But another thing just came to my mind. <laughs> um, before I started riding the church van, I used to have every single night or almost every night, I used to have this dream that I'm in a van or a bus <laughs> with a group of people mm. traveling. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm just traveling. And I used to tell my brother, the same brother that came and told me about truth of God, I used to tell him, man, I'm having this dream that I'm in the, I'm in the bus, man, with a group of people. I don't know what it means. I'm just traveling. I don't know where I'm going. And then after that, I started riding the church van. You know, so I'm like, man, that maybe that's what it meant. <laughs> you know, wow. but um, yeah, so that's how I started going to church. <clears throat> okay, that's good. Um, and so, go. and so, since you've been in this, you know, since you've come into first church, come into the truth of God, you know, filled with the Holy Ghost. Because one thing you know, I want to be able to to get is to help you know sinners as well watching this. You know, who are watching because I know some are watching from outside, and they, there's always that wonder, like what what is the diff, like what is so hard, and what is the difference within holiness? Like why holiness? You know, I mean, why can't I just stay with the Baptist church I'm at? Why can't I stay with the Catholic church I'm at, or Pentecostal, Lutheran, whatever? Like they know that there's something different. They know it, but in terms of you coming in, what advice would you say for those you know watching from outside in terms of how it holiness is like the difficulties, of course, because I don't like to, you know, this is not something I'll entice somebody to come in and say, yeah, it's easy, it's all fun. Don't you see? Look, everybody's clapping and pushing up, <laughs> jumping, running around, doing the boogaloo, all this type of stuff. You understand? I always like to let the person know right away, like this is going to be the hardest thing you ever do in your life. You go right. and suffer. You go, you're probably going to have more rougher days than, than than good ones. Every day will be a grateful one, as long as when God, you know, gives you another opportunity to live, because He's giving you an opportunity to get right. So, you coming in, you know, just just how did you grow, you know, in terms of you know from being a young man, in terms of what you were, like how how and growing, of course. But how how did it help you grow? How how effective? was this message in your life compared to how you grew up versus being in this teaching? Like, like the effect that it had on you. What differences did you start to see in terms of, you know, how you thought and, you know, who you hung out with or, the, you know, the left and right and so forth? Well, <laughs> every fall, like every false church that I have a bench in one night, I feel like I've never, I never um, did no teaching like that. There was, there was, maybe a few little teaching that, you know, that got stuck with me that I got to, had to get rid of and all that kind of stuff. But coming over into the truth of God, it's like, there's a lot of stuff that um, my brother taught and already told me about and all that kind of stuff. But when I started listening and honestly, it, it, it wasn't, for me, it's like the Holy Ghost caused me to submit so much. You know, because when I receive the Holy Ghost, man, I mean, it's, it's, it's an experience that I can't fully explain. Like, when I receive it, it's like I was out of this world. Like, it took over my mind so much. Like, oh, another thing, too, um, I was, I struggled with uh, cussing. I remember mm -hmm. when I used to go to work and, I, you know, I, I used to cuss. I used to cuss a lot because the guys there cuss. So I feel, I feel like I need to, you know, you know, um, hang with them and match up with them and cuss like them and all that kind of stuff. But I remember when I used to struggle with it. Like I used to go to church on Sunday and Monday I wouldn't really cuss, then Tuesday I cussed a little bit, then Wednesday I, you know, then Thursday I started cussing all over again. Just just so, building up until Sunday comes. Sunday when I cuss on Sunday now. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember when I received the Holy Ghost, mm. the Holy Ghost took that from, away from me right away. I stopped cussing right away when I received the Holy Ghost. Mm. And even if I hear somebody cussing, I used to hate it so much that I walked the other way. I don't want to hear it, wow. you know. So, you know, receiving the Holy Ghost and coming over to the truth of God, it wasn't hard for me. There was nothing that I really struggled with like mm. that. There was nothing that I really struggled with. As soon as I hear it, I submit to it, and I make the changes right away. Because mm. I remember when I, I was when I about to put on a telecast, in my mind, I'm like, Lord, what will you have me to do now, mm. you know? What will you have me to do? I'm ready to submit to it, ready to change, you know? 
at the time, of course, I was struggling with something at the time and still is struggling with something now, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but for the most part, every single thing that I hear, I didn't have no problem changing, didn't have no problem submitting to it. Wow. You know, I remember even the first time when I went to, I think it's South Carolina uh, with uh, some brothers uh, here in Florida. Uh, that's, I think that was my first time traveling. Uh, and uh, I... In the hotel that night, I mean, all the brothers got their pants on, you know, they, they, the pants on and stuff, the skin all covered and whatnot. I'm in my shorts. So I'm like, man, something is, something is, like, something ain't right, man. <laughs> like, something mm-hmm. ain't right. Why are everybody in their pants and I'm in my shorts? Mm-hmm. So I asked the brothers, man, like, what's going on, man? You guys don't wear shorts? They're like, no, brother, we, we don't wear shorts, man. I'm just, it's, it's in the comfort of our, of our homes. You know, mm-hmm. we don't wear shorts out and stuff. I said, man, I didn't know that. When I went home, I threw it all my, almost all my shorts away. Wow. Shorts that I used to wear out and stuff, I threw them right in the garbage. I changed right away. Start wearing pants to work. I went to Walmart and I bought me some pants and I started wearing pants to work, not mm-hmm. shorts anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, so I remember, you know, every time that I tune into the telecast, um, when I hear the stuff, like I used to submit right away. There was nothing that I really uh, struggled with. Um, when I was in the world and stuff, there was not a lot of things that I used to do that was wrong. Maybe that's mm. a reason as well. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, there's one particular thing that I used to do that's wrong. You know, but like smoking, drinking, and all going to the parties and all that kind of stuff. That wasn't really me. I hated dancing. Mm. I hated dancing so much. So if somebody see me dancing in the spirit now, rest assure you, that's not me doing it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I used to hate dancing. I remember going to the club one time, and as soon as I walk in the club, people just bumping and grinding and mm. moving. And I look at all of them, man. I'm like, how am I going to handle this now? Because I know I can't dance and I don't like to dance. And so I, I just bob my head a little bit and move back and forth a little bit. But I told myself, man, I ain't going to another club. I ain't going to another bar. I ain't going nowhere, man. Because I, I, I end up in my mind, I'm like, I just want to leave right now because I don't like this, you know? Mm-hmm. And ever, ever since then, even though it was shortly that the Lord came and saved me. But at that time, I told myself, man, I'm not going to another club mm-hmm. and I'm not going to another bar or anything like that because I hate it. That kind of lifestyle is not for me. So coming into the truth of God, again, it's, it's, it, was, you know, it wasn't so hard for me. It wasn't so hard to put that off or put this off. It wasn't so much for me to put off anyway because I didn't really get no teaching from the false church mm-hmm. you know, and stuff that I used to go to. I didn't get no teaching like that to me where I, I need to change this. I need to change that, you know, I need to reevaluate myself and stop believing this or stop believing that, you know, so all the teaching that I've got, basically from the truth of God, all the teaching that I have now is basically from the truth of God, because I never really paid attention to the other teaching in the the false Mm. church. No, I understand 150% what you mean by that, you know, it's, uh, it relates to myself, me, I grew up in, you know, Haitian false church and whatnot, and, and I just... I couldn't wait for the church to be finished. When Monday, when Monday came, I was already sad because I'm like, man, we're going to have to go back here again on Sunday. And it was a false church. I can't even remember. So, like, I don't, I was not, we didn't learn how to pray. I didn't even know nothing about fasting. I didn't know, I didn't know nothing from, I just knew I needed to get out there. We just knew so much of what people would do. And they were members. So we knew a lot that they did on the outside. And so forth, you know, so, but you're there, you're not paying attention and whatnot. So pretty much teaching that you really paid attention to, teaching that you really grabbed onto was holiness in a way, which is, which is a blessing, which is a true blessing, you know. And um, no, it's really a blessing where, you know, a brother or sister can come in and not fight it, you know, and not, you're not, you know, you know especially, you know, if you're coming from falsehood or whatever the case is, but even not from falsehood, just coming in, okay, I'm not going to fight this. I'm not going to fight that, but that quickness of you just, you know, getting that change right away. It's a true right. blessing for it. And now within your experience and the time you've been in First Church, you know, within holiness, can you sincerely, can you say that you have no doubt at all that God is with the truth of God? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a question. <laughs> but of course, man, um, of course, I mean, the way I came into this, man, like I said, the way I came into this, I knew it was the Lord's doing, man. Mm-hmm. I didn't, the way I came into this, the way the Lord pulled me into this, 
I've done at that time. I could say like Jesus, I do nothing of my soul. Mm. The Lord, the way the Lord came and blessed me with the Holy Ghost and the way the Lord guided me and you know, how he led me and everything. I, at that time, I could say, I do nothing of my soul. As time progressed, it's like the Lord take, he, he took my hands at first. You know, he, he brought me to it, you know, showed me it and everything. But after a little while, he started leaving me on my own, little by little, for mm -hmm. me to fight for my soul, mm -hmm. you know, and struggle with certain things and do certain things my soul. Him not leading me so much, but now I have the teaching and everything. So, oh, you know what to do, mm -hmm. you know. He's not bringing me like he used to, but when I keep it you know, so of course I could say without a doubt, the truth of God is of God. I remember when I just started listening to Pastor James as well. You know what Pastor James said, when you first hear him, you didn't hear him, but you hear the God in him. Man, I was fascinated. I was fascinated with his voice. Like the way he sounded, I could hear God blasting through his voice, you know, and I was so fascinated with that that sometimes I'm not even paying attention to the teaching. I'm mm -hmm. just listening to the voice, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? So of course I could say without a doubt that truth of God is from God Almighty himself. And how grateful are you to God, you know, for sending a man of God in these last evil days, in these last times to get us on the straight path? How grateful are you to God for that? Words, words can't express how grateful I am for that. <laughs> words cannot express how grateful I am for sending a man to, to wake us up, mm. you know, to wake us up out of darkness. You know, we, we were in darkness, man, just walking down this dark road. I remember, man, when, when I just received the Holy Ghost, uh, the best way I can explain it is I was just walking down this dark road and, man, it's like when the Lord blessed me, the Holy Ghost woke me up. Like, mm. Oh, man, whoa. And then I turned around and just started running for my life. You know, so I'm, I'm thankful, man. I'm grateful and I'm, I'm thankful because without a man of God, we will never be where we're at right now. Exactly. You know and I'm saying we're still out there doing our foolishness about, you know, just going down the journey, journey of hell. Um, so I'm thankful and I'm grateful, man. I can't thank the Lord enough for sending a, a true man of God, man, a true apostle, you know, in this day and time, you know, because, you know, he's the one that's leading us. We have mm -hmm. to follow him as yeah. he follow Christ, okay. you know. So, you know, and we have to continue to pray and lift him up in prayer that the Lord continue to strengthen him. And uh, give him the knowledge, understanding, and wisdom to continue to lead us and guide us in the right way, in the right fashion, you know, so that one day we might be able to make the first resurrection. No, absolutely. No, that's 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 wonderful, you know, and brothers and sisters and those of you watching from outside, you, you heard it again, you know, and over and over again. And, and those of you watching from outside, just to continue to clarify, these are brothers and sisters testifying about coming into one church. I know you're used to seeing so many different type of testimonies on YouTube of this, and this is all all the all the people you see coming into one church, you know, and not because of flesh, not because of Pastor Gino Jennings, but because God is actually with him, you know, and it's it's a grateful thing to be in something that's so real, you know. So, uh, brother, truly grateful and thankful for you once again to take the time to come and share your testimony and to give it as i say more over business it's very encouraging when you know those of you come and and you have the willingness to truly share it to truly share it without a doubt as well to know that you know you're confident in this because look some may say okay what if somebody comes and share their testimony and they, they backslide or whatever go somewhere else in the next couple of years so well, look, this thing is going to still be here yeah, and it's still going to be here. Yeah, they're gonna, and I don't want them to look at it every single night. Hear them, they're saying it. Oh, yeah. I'm grateful for Pastor Jesus. Because I have no doubt that the truth of God is God's church. And here they are, two, three years later, cursing the man of God, saying he's not an apostle, saying about it's going to make you look foolish. So that's why I tell you before you come, make sure you're sure. Come off of excitement and oh, yeah, no, share my testimony. You see, you see how long I agree to it, man. I know you exactly. Asked, Listen, you asked last year, man. Last, last year, I asked him, I asked this brother last year, and I'm not talking about <laughs> December now because you know, some people be like, Oh, December, brother. No, last year, I, I it was like a good, good, good couple yeah, of months. I think, uh, I think it was uh, maybe September, October, somewhere, there. maybe somewhere, or even, even later on, if I'm if I'm correct. I just knew it was you know, sometime. 
Right, right, right. And and here it is now, brothers and sisters. Yeah, because you know, watch this. I'm not, I'm not the type of person to just, you know, I mean, I like to share my testimony when I'm in church and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm I'm a very low-key person. I'm a yeah. very private person, mm -hmm. you know. So I had to thought about it real good and, and, and everything before I come and be like, you know, be on the podcast and why not give my testimony and all that and sharing my testimony like that and why not, you know. Yeah. So I had to, I had to think about it. <laughs> Absolutely, no, and that's right. And there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Look, y'all are not gonna go to hell if you don't come and share your testimony on the I Thrive podcast. It's something, you know, it's helping and encouraging the saints. You understand? There's nothing, you no know, force, you no know, nothing to come on. And he's not the only one. There's other ones, you know, who are still, you know, not yet, brother, not yet. And I completely understand, and I'm fine with that because what's the point of rushing? You know, you have somewhere to go. Huh? <laughs> 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 you have another church you're trying to go to? Like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> my days, my days. Just, you know, relax. Take the time, especially, you know, when the PJ is preaching and I'm hearing the message from Atlanta. Don't be hasty. You know, be at, I'm not, it's like, come share, but learn the language first. Because you may come, you're still with the apostolicness in you. And you're speaking in that way. You're saying something you weren't supposed to say because you just you didn't you didn't, you didn't relax. You know you just want to come and ha ah, ah, ah. You know so take the time, brothers and sisters. Come on. You know when you're re ready, willing, and uh, and willing. You know when you want to come on and and you know, and you're coming on to sincerely share it because I'm telling you right now this is not only encouraging to left and right brothers and sisters and sinners watching, but it's encouraging to myself as well. You know, there's things I take from it and that I learn, you know, where, and it's just, it's, it's so wonderful to see God constantly just, you know, getting people out just from darkness that they were in, just getting people out from whatever stronghold they had. It's, it's, it's such a true blessing, you know? Right. So thank you very much, brother, for coming on. Uh, once again, brothers and sisters, and those of you watching this podcast affiliates itself with one church and one church only. That is first church of our Lord Jesus Christ where the leader, teacher, and guide is apostle pastor, Gino Jennings. If you want to be baptized right in the name of Jesus Christ, you can go on the truthofgod.com, fill out a baptismal request. Uh, also, you can go on locations to see who which uh, uh, temples in your area and just has the brother did. I think he found uh, 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 Elder Abraham uh, on... Uh, no, he's not, a, he's not an elder. Not yet, not yet, because PJ has to go ordain him. Minister, right. Minister Abraham uh, on Facebook. There may be ways you can find a um you know a minister or sometimes it could just be that main uh, secretary from that location you can reach out to and then they'll set it up um just like that and if you want to know if there's right. a church close I, to you i think the best way to find uh, uh get in touch uh, get in touch with somebody is going on the website and going on the location when you do that um the minister is uh who's under that location or over that location the information like phone number mm -hmm. and stuff will be be right there okay okay perfect perfect now, as you see those of you watching, I know some of you want to get baptized. I know there's one uh, brother from Ethiopia. He wants to get baptized and so forth. So here's information you can follow. Uh, uh, and also, once again, for church location, before you go, call just to make sure and see. If you want to take that three, four-hour drive and take that risk, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. But these guys' prices, I know they're going to make you think. I know they're going to make you think twice. You know, so um, thank you for listening, brothers and sisters. Don't forget, keep the apostle and his family in prayer faithful ministering brethren and their families in prayer and one another in prayer as well. Don't forget to keep me and my family in prayer and brother Xavier Miller, Jamaica yes, Americanized, <laughs> Americanized Jamaican. From Axtiel, no mash potato. You know, I think so. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let me get out of here before I keep going, brother. Hey, Thank you. Thanks for having me, bro. <laughs> no, no problem. Thank you for listening, brothers and sisters. God bless and peace be unto you all. All right, peace.